What's up you guys, it's Graham here. So lately, there's definitely been a lot of talk and discussion about the upcoming stimulus packages. After all, it's the closest that we can get to receiving free money. Almost 20% of the United States is now out of work, and the markets are reacting exactly the opposite of what people think is gonna happen. Not to mention, it seems as though every few days, there's another twist and turn as to what's going on, who's not receiving their stimulus money, who is receiving their stimulus money, and it's turning into quite the overall mess. But thankfully, there is light at the end of the tunnel because it looks as though so they're soon going to be passing another round of stimulus, which means more money potentially back directly in your pocket. So in this video, I'm going to be summarizing what's currently on the table, what could come from this, what you could expect, and the time frame as to when this might happen. Because like I said, this one will impact you directly, and it's all about getting as much money into the people's pockets as possible. Unless, of course, Shake Shack takes it first. Just kidding, that was a joke. Okay, no, but seriously, here's the information you came here for, and if you enjoy the occasional stimulus update video with all the information that you need in one spot, just make sure to do your part and stimulate that like button until it turns blue. Helps out my channel tremendously if you guys enjoy this content. So with that said, let's begin. Now to start, these are the previous stimulus packages that have already gone into effect. Phase one was enacted on March 6, 2020 to provide $8.3 billion worth of emergency funding towards finding a treatment and developing the necessary tests to properly combat the illness. Illness. Phase 2 was enacted shortly after that on March 18th, 2020, known as the Families First Response Act, and supplied $100 billion worth of funding towards paid sick leave, testing, food assistance, unemployment benefits, and additional protection towards healthcare workers. Now, Phase 3 is where things get really interesting, and most of the videos here on YouTube talking about the stimulus are referring to Phase 3, which had a budget of over $2 trillion. Now, as we're all now aware, you can't just go and give away $2 trillion and expect things to go smoothly. Because even now, weeks later, we're still having issues, although here's where the money was allocated to go. $367 billion went to fund a loan and grant program for small businesses. $130 billion went to hospitals and healthcare providers. $500 billion was set aside to large corporations. $25 billion was set aside for the airlines. $150 billion went towards state and local governments. And the remainder went to increasing the unemployment benefit by $600 a week and giving every eligible American a one-time check for $1,200. However, this was not meant to be the last and final stimulus payout. This was, from the very beginning, meant to get the ball rolling and then assess the situation to see how bad it is and how much more money needs to be redeployed. And that, of course, brings us to phase 3.5. Now, ordinarily, you'd think this would just be called phase 4, but because they ran out of funding of some really popular programs in phase 3, they're putting this one in there before phase 4 to refund some programs and expand a little bit more funding on things they should have done previously. Anyway, phase 3 is going to be costing another $470 billion with $310 billion of that going to refund the small business loan program, which gives businesses access to funding to retain their employees and keep afloat. Another $60 billion is going to be going towards refunding the economic disaster loan, which also ran out of money. And then another $75 billion for hospitals and $25 billion for testing. And now with unemployment still at record highs and businesses still unable to reopen, the Senate is now looking to pass another fourth round of stimulus to get more money back into people's pockets, and this is where things begin getting interesting. Now, full disclosure, here, but all of these are currently just proposals, and I wanted to summarize the details of everything currently in the works for anyone who didn't care about all the minute details of every single bill and instead just want to know in one spot what they have to maybe look forward to. Now, the first proposal is the one that we're hearing the most about. It's by far the most popular, and that would be the $2,000 per month to every eligible American over the age of 16 years old who makes under $130,000 a year. Now, that would be doubled for married couples, meaning if they make under $200, $60,000 a year, they would be receiving $4,000 a month. Then qualifying families with children would receive an extra $500 a month per child, up to $1,500 a month. And these monthly cash payments would not be counted as income, which means it's tax-free. And if you have no earnings, were unemployed, or are still unemployed, you're still eligible. It would also apply to college students and adults with disabilities who are claimed dependent by somebody else. And the way this is worded is that if it were to pass, it would be guaranteed for six months, and then at that time, it could go and be renewed for another six months. Now keep in mind, something like this does not come without a substantial cost to keep it going, and the cost to keep this running is $448 billion per month. So within the first six months, it's going to be costing $2.6 trillion, which is pretty much as much money as the first three and a half stimulus phases combined. There's also some hurdles and obstacles that have to be overcome by this, like does a 16-year-old really need $2,000 a month tax-free? 
What if $2,000 a month is more than what the person was already making? Why does someone making $130,000 a year need an extra $2,000 a month if they're still making $130,000 a year? And what if a person is continuing to work as normal and their worker income has not been affected so far? I'm sure these are all going to be the topics for debate whenever this goes to the Senate for discussion. So I have a feeling if this gets closer to passing, we're likely to have stricter regulation, a lower monthly payout amount given the cost of this package, and the likelihood that they're going to want to make sure that this money goes towards people who really need it the most. And if I were to guess, I would assume they'll probably end up with some sort of monthly payout amount to qualifying Americans, but they're going to end up being more strict about who qualifies. There's definitely going to be more income limitations on this. And they're probably going to want you to either demonstrate or certify that you've been negatively affected before they end up giving you money. But that's just my own assumption, and it's really going to be up to the Senate to decide what happens. Now, second, we have another one that's gathering a lot of mixed opinions here on the internet. Some people absolutely love it, and other people absolutely disagree buys it, and that's what's known as the Rent and Mortgage Cancellation Act of 2020. This is a bill that proposes that renters won't need to pay their rent on their primary residence for one full year, and that not paying their rent is not going to have a negative impact on their credit history or be treated as an owed debt. The same also applies to people who own their own home, in the sense that they wouldn't need to pay their mortgage for one full year on their primary residence. And not paying their mortgage is not going to impact their credit score or put them at risk of foreclosure. Now, it's not clear if this is only mortgage interest or if it's interest plus principal or if it's going to extend your mortgage for up to a year afterwards, but that's up for debate. And third, for landlords out there, if your tenants stop paying you rent, you're going to be reimbursed for that first year. But if you receive money from this fund, you're going to have to comply with a strict set of regulation, including a five-year rent freeze on the property, which means for those five years, if you accept any money from that, you cannot raise your rent. Among, by the way, a few other stipulations in addition to that. And lastly, lenders would receive a fund as well to make up for all of the missed mortgage payments, and from that, they could keep the system running until people begin paying again. With this proposal, there are also no income requirements or limitations listed, so everybody qualifies. Whether you pay $500 a month in rent or $50,000 a month in rent, you qualify. And surprisingly, this proposal is cheaper than giving every eligible American $2,000 a month tax-free. For example, when I did the math in a previous video, I estimated this would probably cost around $1.3 trillion over the course of a year. But there are so many other downsides and unknowns with this bill that I found it rather unlikely of it actually passing, at least anywhere close to how it's currently written. For example, the person who benefits the most from this is some really, really rich person who is renting some super expensive mansion somewhere. That person just ends up getting an absolutely free, amazing place to stay. On the other hand, this doesn't benefit the person at all who's patiently toiled away to pay off their mortgage and doesn't currently have a payment. Or the mom and pop landlord who's breaking even on their investments and has to accept a five-year rent freeze in order to get their money back. So just like the first bill, I think it's rather unlikely of passing without a lot of scrutiny. I do think there can be benefits to implementing something like this, although I have a feeling there have to be some types of limitations or proof that you're actually affected by this and are unable to actually pay your rent. Or this could work like a Section 8 payment where a portion of that payment is subsidized and then you have to come up with the rest. The third, we have another one that I've yet to discuss here on the channel. It is brand new. It's just been proposed. And this is what's being called the Automatic Boost to Communities Act, known as the ABC Act. Now this one is a really really quick read. It's only two pages long, so I'm going to link to it down below in the description for anyone who basically wants to open it up and read along with me. But basically, here's what this proposes. It would immediately provide everyone in the United States with the preloaded debit card of $2,000. And then every month after that, it's going to be automatically reloaded with an extra $1,000 until one year after the crisis ends. Now, here's where things get interesting and rather expensive. Every person includes every person. It doesn't matter how old you are, how much money you make, how much money you don't make. It if you're a person, you get it. That means a family of four would receive $8,000 up front and then $4,000 a month for one year until after the crisis ends. Again, this applies to everybody, so you don't have to worry if you're in college, your parents claimed you as a dependent. No, you're still getting your money. And it also doesn't matter if you're Elon Musk, you're still gonna get the money. Now, because this is a preloaded debit card, they're gonna make it so that you would be able to go to an ATM and actually take out physical cash in the event you need it. And of course, any fees associated with that are gonna be waived. So essentially, this card is as good as cash. Now actually funding this program is quite interesting and I'm going to read to you what they say here. 
no additional debt would be issued. Instead, it directs the Treasury to go and mint two $1 trillion platinum coins. The Federal Reserve would then go and purchase those coins and then permanently retain ownership of those coins in order to maintain their balance sheet. And then, of course, the Treasury can go and spend that $2 trillion that they just made by printing $2 trillion coins. Now, if you're just as confused as I am and can't understand the mental gymnastics it takes to wrap your mind about how this works, here's how this works. It would kind of be like me going and fabricating this $100 one ounce platinum bullion coin. And then I go to you and say, hey, you know what? This is worth $100. Look, it says it's worth $100. So how about this? You give me a $100 bill and I will in turn give you back this $100 coin so that that way you always have $100. You're not losing any money and now I get your $100 bill. Well, that's kind of what's going on here, except it's a really just fancy way of accounting. See, the way I see it, we can't just circulate more money back into the economy without it coming from somewhere, either in the form of eventually higher taxes or maybe even higher inflation at some point in the future. So as confusing as this is worded, it's basically like them going and releasing more money back into circulation without them saying they're releasing more money into circulation. All in all, we'll see if this actually passes, although I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of pushback in the sense of regulating who gets it, how much they get, for how long they get, and any other stipulations that come along with just giving people money. And lastly, we have the one that I think is very intriguing, and that is the Get America Back to Work proposal. This would create a refundable payroll tax rebate covering 80% of American workers' payroll costs up to median wages, as well as create a rehiring bonus for employers to take back their employees. Now, even though the details of this plan are hard to come by, and there are several others that are somewhat similar to this, here's how it would work. Anytime you go and work for an employer, a part of your income is taken out for what's known as Social Security and Medicare tax. And this usually costs about 7.65% of each paycheck. So the plan would be to either cut this out entirely, meaning that you're left with 7.65% more money in each paycheck, or the employer would have 80% of their costs subsidized in order to keep you and retain you as an employee. Now on the surface, this is a really easy one to implement. If you work and get a paycheck, it should automatically be applied so you're not going to have any confusion. It's also the most direct because you will instantly see the savings, except there's a few downsides. One, this requires you to actually be working. So if you're not working or unemployed, this doesn't help you out at all. Same if you're already retired, you get nothing, which somewhat defeats the purpose of helping people out who need it the most, because this helps people out who already have a job and have income in the first place. Now, second, if you're actually working, the amount of money that you're going to be saving is not going to be as much as, let's say, getting $1,000 or $2,000 a month extra. Even if you're making $75,000 a year, saving that extra 7.65% on each paycheck is only going to work out to be about $446 a month. So this is definitely less money than anything else I've listed here. Although if you're self-employed, this amount could be doubled since you're paying both the employer and employee portion of this, meaning you could end up saving 15.3% if you work for yourself. Now third, even though this should incentivize employers to retain their employees and keep them on payroll, it might not be good enough to actually keep their employees on payroll. And number four, this pulls funding away from Social Security and Medicare, which rely on these taxes to stay afloat, and already they're grossly underfunded. So even though this is going to be the easiest to administer, it's unclear how much benefit this would actually have as it's currently structured. And even though there's a few other similar proposals currently in the works, these are the ones that I think are worth noting and worth discussing further. And I have a feeling over the next month, we're probably going to watch these get restructured in such a way where eventually people are going to be getting the money. Now, as for a timeline as to when this is going to happen, it's still a bit up in the air. Although it appears as though they're working to try to get this out as soon as possible, especially if we end up being shut down for a little bit longer. So I would not get your hopes up about getting $2,000 a month tax-free in the next few weeks, but I do think it might be reasonable to see some sort of a blend of a few of the things that I mentioned here, maybe watered down a little bit more and more regulated coming over the next 30 to maybe 50 days. But again, that's just my opinion as some guy on the internet who has absolutely no impact on the outcome of any of this and simply just tries to get everyone to, to stimulate See, I didn't say smash to stimulate the like button for the YouTube algorithm because it helps out my channel. Thank you so much. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, if you have not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Feel free to add me on Instagram. Posts are pretty much daily, so if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there. As on my second channel, The Graham Stephan Show, I post there every single day. I'm not posting here. So if you want to see a brand new video from me every single day, make sure to add yourself to that. And lastly, if you guys want two free stocks, use the link down below in the description. Webull is going to be giving you two free stocks you sign up on their platform and deposit $100 with one of those stocks valued up to $1,400. So if you want your chance to get two free stocks, use the link down below in the description. Let me know which two free stocks you get. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.